we were talking about earlier with the, the heat collection system that blows the air down through the pipes underground. Uh, all of that heat gets given off, but it actually, different than an AGS system, the climate battery system that we've designed this around, um, actually brings that air back into the greenhouse cooler and dryer. And it comes in, uh, in behind this vent here. So we created a, basically just a plywood structure um, here. That plywood structure is protected again with um, that dimple product so that moisture doesn't connect with the wood and rot it out. Um, but in behind this uh, basically metal louver is 30 pipes all strapped to this wall. This wall is about 30 feet long. So there's one roughly every foot back there. And that air comes through those pipes, comes out the top of them and then vents back in through this uh, structure here. The cap of it, we turned into a, a windowsill that's on a slight slope. We'll use that for starting plants as well too. So water that either condensates off that window or plants that we're watering will then uh, wash through and back down on here. We've got a metal flashing that's gonna go on here eventually. So we are still in, a, in the construction phase through here. One of the things that we wanted to make sure that we um, protected against was allowing moisture getting into the framing of the walls. So the same way you keep the moisture on the outside of the house from getting into your house by using siding and um, moisture barriers and things like that, we have to do a similar process here because we're dealing with a very high humidity um, environment and moisture will want to migrate to the drier walls and rot them out eventually. So we've uh, incorporated a few different principles. Wherever we're at a foundation, we actually used a, a rubber peel and stick membrane. Uh, it's a foundation product. So uh, wherever we've got soil up against either the foundation or walls, we've used that, which is probably uh, one of the better products to keep moisture out. It's about a 16th of an inch thick rubber uh, product. And then as a secondary backup against that, we use this plastic dimple product. We use two different types just because it was left over from jobs, but basically the, um, uh, it's a corrugated plastic product that your dirt sits up against and therefore isn't in direct contact with your membrane. If any water gets through that plastic product, which is not waterproof, it then has a free uh, ability to fall straight down to a point where it's at below ground and therefore isn't gonna affect your foundation or your structure. So we use that wherever we had a garden bed up against a foundation wall or even against any sort of uh, wood product. And that's uh, kind of a double backup system at the lower levels. What you see here is basically the uh, sheathing that's on the side of the house that was part of the construction of the house. We're going to actually glue on a product called Duradec, which is um, a vinyl decking product that people use at their houses. Uh, one of the local suppliers has a whole bunch of ends and offcuts and product that they just want to get rid of. And we will glue that to the wall. We'll probably end it with multiple colors and maybe come up with some sort of creative design using it. Uh, maybe some sort of patchwork checkerboard system or some sort of flowing pattern, but we'll see. It'll not only provide a waterproof membrane so that the moisture doesn't get through, it's also really durable as well too. So instead of using a painted on product that could get scuffed and deteriorated, um, this product is meant to be walked on so it's very durable. And then higher up, if you can see that the white um, ceiling and walls is a liquid rubber product. Uh, that's the actual name of it. And it's a paint on product. So it's a waterproofing thing that goes, takes any shape that you paint it onto, and therefore is easier to work with around things like these skylights and stuff like that. We painted on three coats of it to make sure that we had it well covered. And it comes in any color you want. So we just chose white to keep uh, the space as bright as possible. And it allowed us to actually paint that membrane into each one of those skylight uh, openings. There's seven skylight openings there. Trying to get some sort of membrane to wrap around all those surfaces would have been challenging. So we looked at a few different uh, ways to do that. Around doors and windows, we've sealed with spray foam so that we don't get any moisture in behind there. And basically treat it just like a house outside of a house.
Yeah, so what we plan on doing with the greenhouse is monitoring the temperatures over time. Um, we assume that uh, from everything we've done, everything we've read is that this greenhouse will stay above five degrees Celsius when it's fully charged. The soil temperature should rise up to in and around the mid 20s, um, and then that heat will be carrying the greenhouse through the winter, keeping it above that five degree temperature. So we've placed five different temperature probes in the soil all around the greenhouse. And basically they'll be monitoring these temperatures. We'll keep track of that on a bit of a spreadsheet, but they'll be monitoring the temperatures deep down about four feet below uh, the soil surface. And we'll be able to tell that it's uh, what the temperature is rising to. It was, when we put this probe in uh, about a week ago, it was at 17.4 and it's now at 18.6 degrees Celsius. So we've gained a degree Celsius in that week of pumping heat down into the soil. So chances are by the time uh, two years, three years from now, this will get into temperatures into the mid to high 20s. And then that temperature will radiate through the floor into the greenhouse. Uh, so right now I wanna talk a bit about what we've decided to plant in here. Um, right now it's just a, a, a bit of an experiment trying to figure out what we can grow in this climate. So we've planted a bunch of things that may not necessarily be here um, in the future. But basically we have a bunch of new soil that was brought in. Um, it hasn't uh, generated its microbial base yet or fungal base yet. So we're trying to get that established and also try to get some things growing. Eventually what we'll be doing is anything within easy reach will probably be annual crops and we'll use that for lettuces and kales and basils and you name it, melons, tomatoes, uh, whatnot. We'll be stringing up the tomatoes and hanging them from the ceilings. Uh, we'll be putting climbing things on the wall so that um, beans and peas could climb up the wall and, and do that. But then anything outside of that easy reach zone is probably going to be more perennial crops. And we've decided to plant a few things that you may not find in a greenhouse, like a, a lemon tree. We've got that planted. Um, we got two large lemons off that last year, so we'll see what's happening now. It's just coming into bloom. And then we'll also do some understory planting um, in here with uh, um, whatever plants we need to, to achieve the beneficial relationship between those. And that tree will actually grow up in here and probably be about 14, 15 feet tall by the time it's done and may need to be managed by uh, pruning. We've got some other bed space that uh, we'll be using for uh, things like peach trees. We've got a peach tree in the part of the greenhouse that's the colder corner of the greenhouse. So it needs a bit colder weather than say a lemon tree does, or maybe an avocado uh, tree that we may put in the middle here. So we'll space these perennials in the locations of the greenhouse that are different climate zones. The closer we are to a whole bunch of exterior glass is a colder climate. The area in a corner that's near a cold wall, but say an insulated wall is less cold, but still cool. And then the center part of the greenhouse will be um, more moderate temperatures. We're, our hope is more of a Mediterranean climate to try to get this to stay above five degrees year round and uh, maybe uh, even higher than that in the winters.